Hello and welcome to Property Matters and today we're going to be focusing in on politics, politics in property and joining me today is John Howard, regular contributor at Property TV, property developer, Conservative Chairman, ex, I should say, shouldn't I? Ex-Chairman and now President. They make you President oh, when no. you get old. Right, okay. <laughs> Author, mentor, investor, developer, yeah. what else, John? I'm, I'm feeling and sounding very tired with all those titles, but right. yeah, uh, that's right. about it for the moment. Don't know where you get the energy from, but you do very well and we're glad to have Thank you here. Okay, and joining John is Fraser Myers, Deputy Editor of Spiked Online, my favourite political commentators. Welcome, Fraser. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. That's a pleasure. Good to, good to have you on and let's hope we um, have some good banter between us all. So, in the first programme, this is, this is a series of two programmes. In the first one, um, I, I want to talk about the government's involvement in, in, in the property industry. In other words, how hands-on do we really think they should be? Because to me, I see a lot of mistakes. I see a lot of very poorly thought through ideas. Um, so, John, you're the Conservative. I'm going to come to you first. Well, we don't know what we don't know what he is, do we yet? Do we, 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 well, we're going to find out through the program, probably, aren't we? I, I, I reckon but we will I'm find pretty out. sure he's very fair and very neutral, yeah. I would imagine. <laughs> anyway, yeah. uh, the, um, well, you can criticise the, 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 the Conservative Party. Um, of course, you can criticise any party that is in government. However, if you look at what the, they've tried to achieve over the years, um, help to buy, help 700,000 people. Now, I think it helped more developers than it, it did people It might have helped more developers, but it certainly helped a lot of first-time buyers as well. And of course, the developers, probably are donors to the Conservative Party, but we won't go down that route, <laughs> including me. But... <laughs> um, well, you're got, a donor or a recipient? <laughs> <laughs> donor. Right, so, okay. But, but the, help, the help to buy certainly helped me over the years and helped a lot of developers. I accept that, but mm. it's also helped a lot of first-time buyers as well. Um, stamp duty relief to first-time buyers, permissive development. You know, all these things have come in to try and speed up and support the, house, the housing um, crisis, if you want to call it that, in the UK. Um, you know, and I think you have, to be, you have to be fair. It's very, very difficult in this country to build uh, on land because you've got you've got the local MPs saying, "Oh, well, I'm going to lose a load of votes if you if if we accept all this housing." But it's got to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And actually, Labour, which I don't like mentioning them at all, but I will do. Labour talking about um, uh, compulsory purchasing land at farm value, farm uh, value, farm farmland value, in order to build new towns and, and villages, similar to what they did with Milton Keynes mm. in the 1960s and 70s. Mm. Now, to be fair, I don't think a Conservative government could come up with that idea, even if they thought it was a good one, but Labour are able to. And I think, you know, there are, there are, there have been a number of initiatives, some which have worked well, some haven't. One of the latest initiatives today, actually, from London School of Economics is that, and this will go down now with, well with young people, is that um, the, the older members of society who own a large house should be able to sell that house and buy it and buy another house with no stamp duty in order to get get it well, moving and get and, and, and get them into a smaller home, releasing the larger home for a bigger family. Now that will, that will go down like a lead balloon because we are the generation, Stephen and I are the generation that have benefited most mm. probably. From, from property values over the last 20, 30 years. Mm. John, I understand what you're saying. And, and, and the ideas like buying up land as, <coughs> as farmland or at farmland prices to develop, it, it's, it's great. And the idea of new towns and out-of-town towns it, it is great, except everything takes so long. I mean, I, I can remember working for Sir Terence Conran down at Butler's Wharf, Tower Bridge there. Took twenty years to get off the, off the ground. Yeah, you know, before it was accepted, and it took the Lord Mayor's office being there as the catalyst to finally really get it going. I mean, it was shocking living down there at one stage. I mean, I, you know, I used to try and come home to Butler's Wharf on the Thames there, and the taxi driver is uh, not taking you over there, mate. I might not get back. You know, so I'm not crossing that bridge. 
heritage. But these things take such a long time. I remember people telling me, you know, the commercial road area in London, oh, that's going to be the biggest buzz ever. Well, 40 years on, I'm still waiting. I'm still not that keen to get out of my car there after dark, you know. Um, it's very, very difficult. And the, these towns like Milton Keynes, it's only in the last 10 or 15 years that it's just been accepted as a normal no, postcode. I, 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 I mean, I don't know how you feel about that. I, I mean, I would agree with that. Well, you've got to start somewhere. Yeah. And I yeah. think the, you know, the big failure has been the failure to build houses. Now, whether that's uh, expanding London, for instance, or other big cities, or whether it's the failure to build new towns. You know, we need 600,000 new houses a year Absolutely. to meet and demand. Building 250 yeah. at best. And, and so what worries me is there's not been enough um, sort of activity in terms of either letting builders get on with it, yeah. or, you know, we don't, we don't live in the days where you have a government housing works or public housing works anymore. Um, whether, they, whether you want to revive that or not is an open question, but we're neither letting builders get on with it, nor is the government itself building enough housing. But there is a sort of flurry of activity um, around the rental market, some of which makes sense, some of which doesn't. There seems to be a lot of interest in the demand side of things. You mentioned help to buy, you know. Homes in, look at Homes England. They've yeah. got Billy, Homes England, got, and I've, I borrowed £20 million pounds off them and paid it back, fortunately, for everyone. But I mean, Homes England uh, are, are the government property bank, and it's been set up in order to drive housing for, get housing built. So you can't say that the government haven't tried. I, 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 you can't I, say I, that. I'm not disputing they haven't tried, John. What I'm asking is how hands-on should they be with the market? Because let, let me just ask you a question. But my theory for a number of years has been this, that if we have a housing shortage, if developers develop and are sure that they can sell their product at the end of that development process, which to me comes down to funding and ease of mortgage uh, uh, applications being accepted, um, is it not true that we'd have as many houses as we need? Well, I, I do think, I mean, Michael Gove has, has, has made some pretty stupid, daft decisions, in my view. Um, very bright man. You probably know him personally. But, uh, I mean, the one thing he's come up with the other week was actually 30-year fixed rate mortgages. Mm. Now, that seems to be, for the first time, a, a very sensible... We don't want it at 7% like it is in America. Yeah. But... <laughs> that sounds quite sensible to me. And everyone knows then you've got some stability. 95% mortgages guaranteed by the, by, the, by the government. That seems quite sensible. But John, we've had this conversation before, you know, can we have lifetime mortgages which go past the life yeah. of the, the person applying? They can be passed down to relatives. In other words, I think the emphasis goes from the person to the property. Yes. in terms of mortgage. Yeah. So that, that property's got a mortgage. If you want to take it over, well, well and that, wouldn't. To me, that sounds quite a sensible idea. I'm not bright enough to work out the economics of it all, but... <laughs> I think, you know, more choice in terms of sort of housing products. It's not because like, you need different ways of renting houses yes. as well. Yeah. Uh, there are only, you know, there are two, there's not enough variety in rental contracts. And if you go to continental Europe, people can rent a house or a flat for 10 years yeah. or something like that. You can have a sort of stability without necessarily owning mm. a home. But again, I, th I think the big problem comes down to supply. And, and it's not just that, you know, the, the thing is the green belt, I think, is the big issue. There is a, a real on. reluctance yeah. to build on the green belt. There is, in, in the public imagination, uh, there's this idea that it's only rolling hills. Absolutely. That it's all, you know, beautiful Absolutely. meadows and it must never be disturbed. When in reality, you know, there's a lot of quite not very nice land that's, you know, that's really prime real estate that could, you know, you're, if you go to places like Chesham and Amersham, where there was a big by-election recently, there's a tube station, uh, you know, next to a big housing development. And there's all these fields and it's in the middle of London. And you think this is absolutely, pro there should be, you know, blocks of flats there for families and things yes. like that. It's, it's really disappointing to not see houses being built. And often that's that's really about the government getting out of the way rather than Absolutely. Well, the, um, green, the green, involved. But the Green Belt came in in 1948 or 1952, yeah. something like that, wasn't uh, it? Yes, that, it was the first Labour government, the first Town Labor and Country government. Planning Act. Yeah. yeah, so it's their fault. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so, so you got it's, that one it's in never quick, been yeah. changed <laughs> yeah. since then. It's crazy. It's 70 years old, the, 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 you know, it's bonkers. But the only thing the council can build on Greenbelt, do you know what it is? No. Park and ride. <laughs> so they can cover it with tarmac. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, there's, there's areas in this country that are Greenbelt that are next to local tips and all sorts. Mm. It needs to be adjusted. It's a good thing. We want it. 
but it needs to be brought up to standards. And that's another thing that this government have not done. And they could have done it. And they just don't seem to have wanted to take on, it's like, it's like commercial rates, simple mm. thing there. Again, archaic, should be done on the VAT or whatever, it, or we'll do it, a modern system. There's so many things this government have, have, have shied away from. Perhaps it's because of COVID and Brexit and everything else they've had to do, or perhaps it's because some of the ministers just aren't very good. I think it's also, I think, you know, the government has instinctively sided with sort of current homeowners when they're not really seeing the potential of if they create a new generation of homeowners, then that's a new generation of voters. It's I think they're very short sighted in that. Spot respect. on. Spot on. Because but they, you know, many people who own a home and understandably, I understand why if you own a house, you don't want loads of building works happening down your road. No. But there are bigger interests at stake. There is a national interest in having more houses, having more infrastructure and those yeah. things. Uh, and that needs to be challenged. People, I think government people have just been weak. The, the government <laughs> have been weak, I agree with you. And I think Labour actually can afford, you know, certainly for the first year or two, can afford to be quite ballsy with it all, you know. Uh, but, but you know, this, this Conservative government, uh, I agree entirely with you, in many ways have been weak and too scared to take on challenges. Uh, because it would upset some of their members. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, when you're canvassing uh, at an election, you're knocking on the doors mainly of aspirational people who are living on the modern the modern property developments, which mm. they've bought house in, because they're the ones who are likely to vote Conservative. So the more, and the government know this, that the more people that, that buy their own home are likely to vote Conservative rather than Labour. But they, yeah, they, they haven't done enough to sort of no. flip those photos over. Labour, you know, it'll be interesting to see what they do. I mean, in the past, they've made pledges to, um, you know, build 300,000 houses. Uh, in the, the new Labour government Good didn't, didn't do that. Uh, well, I always want to know, who's we? <laughs> when they say <laughs> we're going to build, who's but, we? <laughs> but also, when, when, when Starmer talks about building a million and a half houses in the, in the lifetime of Parliament, he's talking about... Um, social houses. He's mm. not talking about, you know, the houses that many, many people in this country want to live in. He's talking about about houses. And I read today that we need another 1.6 million homes in the next 10 years. Yeah. Pro rata on top of the 300,000 yeah. that they say they're building. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to take a break there. So join us after the break when uh, I'll be asking uh, John and Fraser to delve even more deeply into the politics of property. Hello and welcome back to part two of Property Matters and we're talking about politics in property. I'm Stephen Galpin and I'm joined by Fraser Myers and John Howard. Welcome back guys. Thank you. Um, John, question for you really to start with. Why are you bullying me? <laughs> Go no. on. John, I've been doing programmes with you. You've been for, bullying me for the last five or six years, five to be six fair. Five years. Yeah, go on. Um, so we might, we might as well carry on in the same <laughs> Yeah, carry vein. on. Yeah, go on. <laughs> I can take it. Okay. Look, um, 16 housing ministers in the Conservatives' mm. tenure, which means an average of eight months in office for each one. How on earth are we going to get consistent and practical housing policies in place? Well... I totally agree. I've met a few of them. Um, <laughs> the amount they know about property, they've probably bought maybe two or three houses in a lifetime, wouldn't you say, probably? Maybe, yeah. yeah. Probably. Um, they're clueless. The argument is that they're coming from it from a different angle. But for me, you need someone who's experienced in property to advise and, and, and to be a minister. Uh, and I cannot, for the life of me, understand They've got Kevin Hollinglake, I think, he's a minister. Now, he had a string of estate agents up north. Knows about properties, also a property developer. What's he doing? Pensions or something, isn't he? I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's crazy. Why not put a, a, a square peg in a square hole? Mm. <laughs> well, I think it's, you would be hard-pressed if you went around and asked members of the public, who is the current housing minister? I think it would it'd make a brilliant answer on I point. don't know. It's, it's Lee Rowley, but it'd make a brilliant answer on pointless, wouldn't it? You know, you'd, <laughs> you'd win the round. I mean, that just shows that it's, surely this is, housing is the most important thing According to, to the overwhelming majority yeah. of just yeah. people. Yeah. It's the thing as well. we spend most of our money on, most of our paycheck yeah. goes on our housing. Um, it's 
you know, it's integral to how you see yourself, yeah. how you live your life. It's where you spend, it's where you sleep, for God's sake. Yes. Um, it's how people measure, you know, where they are wealth. in life, measure their wealth. Mm -hmm. So to think that this is just given almost, it's almost an afterthought. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's, it's never been considered uh, a sort of top uh, well, ministry. It's well, not, you, it's not no, a portfolio that... that politicians want to take on you say particular. that Fraser but at every at every conservative conference that I I've been to and I've been to a few of them mm. some are good some are bad Liz Truss's was interesting you're probably there <laughs> yeah. um, so but everyone every time they say that housing is the top of their agenda yeah. it's the most important thing they have to sort out yet they yet they put people in that role who aren't capable of probably doing it haven't got a good brief aren't experienced and like you said, they get rid of them within an average of eight, nine months. It's bonkers. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's seen as a junior role, effectively. You know, you go on, you... Fair isn't it, is it one of those roles that you get when you're on the right, either the way up or the way down? It is, it is basically, yeah. And, you know, the... But it's so important. We only had, I think, before Lee Rowley, um, who we had the current culture secretary, and she was only in for a couple of weeks. McVeigh? She's, she's I mean, she's done it. I mean, lots of people have done it, uh, but... Again, it's well, a step stone according, role. According, according, according to Stephen. Yeah, and not, I mean, lots of but lots of top 16. ministers have been there. 16. It's just again, it's not it's not something that the government particularly takes seriously, and I think that goes for both parties as well. It's not, it's never been seen as a, a prized ministerial role in the same way that you know, Home Secretary, Fraser, Defense do you, Secretary. Those do, you, do you think it? Do you think it's time that somebody ought to stand back from this and just have a look at the overall thing? Now, let let, let me just say quite openly. I, I live in a fairly expensive property across the road here. Right? Yes. How was that? You know, I, I, I didn't do it by being super clever or anything. I did it by selling my homes two, you, three, you, four, five years at, at, at a time after having lived. I made a reasonable profit, tax free, reinvested in property, and, 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 and gradually stepped up over a number, quite a number of, of, of years. Okay. You benefited from infla property, inflation property inflation like I have and people yeah. of our generation. But. but um, for instance, do we think the days of just being able to sell your own property for whatever you want and have the profit tax free, do, do you think those days are numbered? Do you think, do, do you think somebody <laughs> well, ought to have a look at that? But I bet you there's not a government in, in no, sight that would have the dare, I dare mean, do Labour it. don't believe in anyone owning more than one home, do they? As far as I know. Uh, I, you'd have to ask Keir Starmer if he believes in anything. But that's... Well, well <laughs> that's a clue to how he votes, I think. Though. Yeah. Well... Yeah, I, I mean, I, Mr. Starmer interviewed at the weekend. I, I, I mean, he, he certainly stuttered over a few of his explanations of their policies, didn't he? No charisma he's, whatsoever. He's, he's, he's not exactly the most electric guy you'll ever, no. No. ever but, meet. But, but, but people may see him as a steady Eddie yeah. and a safe pair of hands. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's what the Tories are trying to, you know, uh, turn over, essentially. They're trying to portray him as a bit of a risk, which I don't think works because he has, you know, the charisma of a breeze block and is essentially like committed like to that. he's essentially committed to changing nothing you know he's so many sort of policies he's yeah. copying the the tory ones i suppose there's a bit of he's putting a bit of difference in housing actually he, in, well, in emphasizing the yeah, sort of house uh, building target I, I, I think the other thing he's going to do um which uh, gove hasn't quite got the balls to do is to say to landlords by the way if you rent the house to someone or flat to someone you can never get them out if they pay the rent. So we'll end up with what's called a sh what was originally years but, ago but that regulated tenancy or sure tenancy as a market rent, but you can't get the tenants out. That takes us back to the That's days of Rackman and everything animals. else, doesn't it? Yeah, we're going. We'll be going full circle. Full circle think, on things. Yeah, and the, you know you have Sadiq Khan in London who's mooted you know uh, what do you call them capped rents and things oh. like that. It's an another sort of. The problem is, it, again, it's a disincentive for, for landlords. landlords. Uh, People, and you know. Absolutely. And, and the joke is, by the way, cap, the cap rents came in, in in Southern Ireland in 2016. Last year, they, they've reverted it now mm. because last year there was only 682 properties to rent in the whole of Ireland in August. Oh, yeah, there's the viral videos of people queuing yeah, down the streets in, yeah. in, in, in central Dublin. And, 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 and Scotland have tried it. Um, uh, for, for the last year and I've, I'm doing some developments in Scotland uh, and that hasn't worked either mm. because when they come when the properties come vacant they cap it at 3% a year but when they come vacant the landlords are shoving it up 20% yeah so, yeah. so what's the point of that yeah John are, are, are we 
struggling with all of this, I, I've, I've suggested one thing that maybe needs to be looked at. The other thing is stamp duty. You and I have discussed this before, whether it would be worthwhile moving the stamp duty um, to the seller rather than mm. the buyer, mm. um, simply because that way, you, if it was an inclusive figure in the price of the property, you'd be able to fund it. Yeah, Stephen, over the years, um, I think that's the most uh, sensible suggestion you've ever made. Mm. Right. Because you're absolutely right, because the, the, the seller hopefully has got equity in the property. Whereas if you're a first time buyer, well, not first time buyers aren't paying it, but if you're a second time buyer yeah. and you're struggling for that bigger deposit or whatever, um, then, then well, I, I, that, I that think that 3% that or so can yeah, really hurt. Really hurt. And of course, that's what's come out today, as I said earlier, you know, about older people not having to pay it, which will go down like a lead balloon, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. Well, I have to. I think it's a great you. idea, by the way. <laughs> Senator Stephen, I have to defer to your expertise on on stamp duty, but uh, yeah, you know, it, it's, it, it sounds it's, sensible. I mean, it really is a a tax that probably stops people from um, moving to different parts of the country for jobs and everything else. It's a it's a big problem. But then. You know, well, John, has, has you, the money. that's I mean, you know, that's another thing of why housing is so important and why the mm -hmm. sort of fluidity of the market is so important. That, think of the amount of uh, you know, people do need to be able to move. Yeah. That people do need to be able to. There are so many sort of lost gains, economic gains from people mm -hmm. not being able to move yeah. around the country, from not being able to uh, live where they want to live, live near where the work is. It's just, you know, there are so many kind of cascading disasters that come from the fact that we have a housing crisis. It's bigger than just a housing crisis. It is. It's an yes. everything crisis. Yes. John, as a, as a developer, you, you, you've developed all over the country, yeah. haven't you? And you've done very well for yourself. Well, what's the, done what's, okay. what's the biggest block you find in terms <laughs> of developing? Oh, crikey, where do you want me to start? I think, I think the biggest block has to be the amount of time it takes to obtain planning permission. And that has got worse and worse and worse over the years. The government have tried to do something about it by penalising authorities that don't give you a decision within three months. That hasn't really worked because what they do gets to nearly three months and they go, well, if unless you withdraw the application, and put it back in again, yeah. we're going to refuse it. What do you do? <laughs> so you, 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 you let them have more time. So, But is that on the basis of the planning officers recommending that it be rejected or is it actually no, the, that's the, just the, the lay committee saying that, no? No, that, that's yeah. just the time. That's just the because they haven't managed to deal with it within time scale. Mm. And that, that, that's, I mean, we are more worried in this country about newts, newts and bats than we are about people having homes to live mm. in. And that is a major, major, well, I mean, major I, problem. I, I, I had a permission refused once. It was on the Thames, replacing, a, re replacing <laughs> a boatyard with a lovely, <laughs> lovely building with a lovely glass roof, yeah. which slid open to a sort of central dining area. Yeah, we're getting the impression. Right, you got the idea? Yeah. Well, they turned it down because they said the glass would dazzle the fish. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, you just can't make I don't it know. up. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, the environment has become almost, it's taken on sort of almost religious quality I agree. Yeah. in this yeah. country. Too where, much so. Too much so. You know, people obviously want to preserve a good environment, especially yes. where they live. You know, you want, uh, you want to live uh, near nice green spaces and things like that. Of course you do. But... You know, when even uh, Prime Minister or former Prime Minister Boris Johnson was uh, saying that he couldn't uh, have an extension on his house because of the newts yeah. issue, there might not even have been a newt, but the possibility of newts yes. yeah. meant there could be no building. It's and absolutely you just think this, it's, it, this is a, you know, we've got to move on from this. It's the 21st century. This we need to be able to build. We need to be able to build housing infrastructure, all kinds of things, and we're just being held back. Totally, I agree. And with is, totally. It, is it the planning officers holding it back, or is it the lay committee? No, I don't think it's the lay committee particularly. I, th I think they're not enough planning officers. Uh, they don't pay them enough. So any good ones end up being planning consultants. And we use a number who used to be in the local authorities. Uh, I think, uh, 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 for me, the planning officers should be paid a lot more money. You get a better quality person doing the job and they should be paid from central government, not from local authority or even county council. Uh, they should be paid from central government and they should be paid a lot more money. 
Okay, but I, I, I've tried to draw you twice on the subject of, of, of lay councillors. Yeah, I know you have. Um, and <laughs> w w what I'm trying to get from you is that do, do you Should think they be for, experts? Well, do you think, for instance, that you know development is so complex these yes. days, not only with green issues but all sorts yes, of environmental issues, that these people are capable of making the right decisions? Well, at one time, uh, Ben Gummer, who was the Ipswich MP, yeah, a very yeah. good MP, became a minister, um, and Ben was very helpful to me uh, over the years on a number of issues, planning issues. Um, he came up with an idea where you'd have, uh, and I was actually asked to be on one of them, uh, in, in a local authority area, you would have a subcommittee of experts, mm. who, an architect, engineer, that type of profession, property developer, dare I say if that's a profession, um, who would then advise uh, early on in, in, in the application uh, on the look of it and everything else and the ability to be, to be actually be developed. Because sometimes people can get planning permission but can never develop it. Yeah. Because it's too much money, it's cost too much to do, and it's a waste of time. Um, Brown, uh, uh, especially in Brown, uh, Brownfield sites. So, uh, and by the way, if we built on every Brownfield site available in the UK, we never have to build on green land. Right. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely bonkers. That idea never happened. Whether you really want a bunch of architects sitting as, as um, to, to, to look at planning applications, I'm not sure. They're a bit woolly for me. <laughs> well, they're a bit too fee-orientated, aren't well, they? Well, they're a bit too fee-orientated. <laughs> fee they're all very nice people, but they're a bit woolly. I, I, I was saying to um, Fraser off camera earlier, there used to be a, a development company not a million miles from here that used to specialise in first-time homes. Um, I know them. <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> and they did very, very well for themselves. And they're a superb service for young people wanting yep. their first home. But they were all very square. They all looked they're very also, much the very, same. Very similar. And if yeah. you did have a drink and get lost on the way home, you'd be hard pressed. You could be anywhere one. in the country <laughs> just about. Yeah. <laughs> you'd be hard pressed to know which one was yours. But in some ways, I think at one end of the market, we need to sort of get back to that in a way. A bit, a bit of simplicity, a bit of straightforward development. I, I think and the one area that, one area, Stephen, that they've got wrong is shared ownership. Because mm. shared ownership is a great opportunity for young people to get on the property ladder where they buy half the house and the other half is held by the local authority or a, a housing association. But they made it so difficult because they still have to pay rent for the other half. Yeah. Which is crackers. In, what, in which case, they might as well go and buy a house anyway. Well, the throwback on giving the keys it's back crazy. is, 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 is it's crazy, crazy and, numbers. And selling them on is very difficult. Yeah. yeah. And that's a real shame because well, actually to, you, it's a good idea. You've got to principle. find somebody who wants half a home. Yeah, but it's know? a good idea in principle. In principle. In principle, it's a good idea. But that's a simple thing that they could easily sort out and mm. change. They've just got no experience. Okay. They're naive. Yeah. Okay, well, look, on that note of um, optimism, optimism. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, was, I was struggling for the word. Yeah. Then, uh, but anyway, so so I'm going to say a big thank you to Fraser Myers, Deputy Editor of Spiked Online. Thank you for coming in, Fraser. Thank you. John Howard, as ever, John, thank you for coming in. It's a pleasure. In. Great to have your input on stuff. I'm Stephen Galpin. Join me again next time on Property Matters. And don't forget to tune in to the second in this series of programmes about property and politics. See you then.